Thank you to all of our members for supporting this channel, especially the Lords and Commanders. If you're interested in extra battle reports and helping to support this channel, hit the link in the description box below. Go check out our channel partners, Baron of Dice and Grey Matter Games. They have some amazing products. There will be promo codes and links in the description box below. All right, what is up, Wargamers? We have another Twitch stream for you tonight, and we are very, very stoked to be going over some of the Adepticon reveals, and we have a special guest tonight. Obviously, Andrew is in the house. Give some props to Andrew. Consider following on Twitch because he put together this whole Twitch platform. And if you're catching this on YouTube, please hit the link down below in the description box so you can go follow us on Twitch as well. We want to grow this so we can keep doing this kind of content for you. Mason Knox is here. He did fantastic at Sparkle Party GT a couple weeks ago, taking first place with the dreaded Flesh Eater Quartz. So we're going to be talking about that after we go over Adepticon reveals. Mason, welcome to the stream. I appreciate you, brother. Of course. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Happy to talk Flesh Eater Quartz and the awesome Quartz of Delusion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Andrew, go ahead and get us started. All right. First of all, how's everybody doing today? And what have you guys been up to? Jason, I'll let you go first since you're our special guest. All right. Uh, man, today was just a long work day. But um, hobby-wise, I have been painting up some Cities of Sigmar. I've been really interested in the new um, kind of like Warband style they've got. So I've been doing like the Hexbane Hunters, the Command Core. I've got Callus and Toll on the way. Kind of just working on a fun menagerie build and with the wilder core hunters i wanted to do like oops all dogs kind of build with um with cities so i think it'll be pretty solid to, to mess around with but i'm doing like a painting journey with those um and prep wise i am kind of gearing up to play a tournament in about a month i think it's a month from today actually on uh, april 20th uh mm -hmm. in washington here so kind of just um mental prep for that and getting a few practice games in but that's about it that's awesome. Yeah, the seeing like Jeremy's list that went LVO was like a lot of random stuff. It mm -hmm. felt like that. But then like some of the new stuff that's coming out, it's all those little heroes and all those little things you can do. Just tons of little utility that's actually kind of viable. Like I just want to make a giant D and D party, and right? And like throw it at somebody essentially. Right. <laughs> and Callus and Toll seems like a weird one, kind of like the father daughter duo, where you're gonna have like two units that are both heroes or maybe it's five heroes we don't really quite know what they're doing with that yet but it's kind of a weird thing so it's going to be like extra orders with those guys and uh, it's just a really awesome war band you know they're like main characters in a bunch of the city story too so yeah it's gonna be fun yeah and bringing the I want that, uh, convention model though the yeah Rook same or yeah the um i know people can get them at adepticon right now but i'm yeah out Whoever's going to Tacoma Open, I'm gonna to have to make a, make sure I get a hookup to get that model. There you go. Yeah, I want that crow. Uh, on my end, I've been yeah, I've been also working on cities, uh, kind of similar <laughs> to Mason, uh, wanting to do a lot of heroes, wanting to do Cav as well. Um, I'm got, kind of slowly going through them. Uh, I was also thinking that since like the next edition, like spoilers, has a lot of stuff that involves three inches. A lot of the uh, the rules. Um, around cities are built around interacting within three inches. So I think it might be fun to practice that. And I'll probably break out my Idoneth at Blue Sky Open GT as well. Um, Cause my cities are a ways from being done, but I'll, I'll probably yeah. ally in another unit so I can paint the next, the next thing for my cities. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I would like to have it ready, but it's a pretty ambitious endeavor. Like I, I might be able to and, and pivot away, but it, it would be, quite risky i think to to, yeah. to make a swap like that but what's going on in the studio david well we've just been filming tons of battle reports uh gray matter gaming fantastic uh battle mat objective marker company and they've got some really other cool stuff is uh sponsoring a series of videos so we've been working with them uh, they're doing double the discount right now for battle mats. So there will be, if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be a link in the description box. Go check them out. Amazing stuff. Really, really good battle mats. This guy is a total G, dude. He sent us one of every single battle mat on his website. So we've just been cycling them out, showing them off. That's been a lot of fun. I'm glad that you guys are really digging cities. Uh, Michael, who can't be here tonight because he's very busy, just finished 
painting this bad boy right here wow. and uh, turned out really nice. This is kind of going to be a potato pick because I am on a, uh, a webcam on my laptop, but I'm and working on that. Nice. And we got a pretty sick new little bit of equipment right here. We got a high-functioning gimbal for our action cam on the... Uh, on the battle reports that we do. And I've just been playing around with this. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. Can't wait to see. So that. that's it, man. <laughs> you know, just getting busy. And uh, we filmed a really fun battle report with Flesh Eater Quartz and Cities of Sigmar with a ton of Cavaliers. So he just finished painting 20 of those. And uh, yeah, man, just on the grind, that's doing a lot great. of really fun stuff for all the viewers. And uh, that's it. So um, let's go ahead and get into the some reveals, yes. shall we? All right, let's get into the Adepticon reveals. Starting off with the Warcry Warbands. OBR Monsters versus Sylvaneth Morning Glories, because that's the most evil plant. And these are pretty evil plants. <laughs> um, pretty interesting group of models here, particularly the Bone Reaper side. They are pretty wild, weird models. Yeah. They found a way to put dogs in OBR and, and of giving a dog beat. a bone. They made a dog <laughs> a bone. Right. Yeah. I like Did you guys think, okay, and maybe I'm misremembering or I'm crazy, but it felt like that reveal video was like ridiculously dark. Yeah. Like I was watching it and having a hard time seeing the colors and all the detail until they like did another pass on them because it was like, it was really hard to, to see it. Yeah. I felt the same way. It was just, it was, they they did that kind of consistently where they featured a lot of talking and then they would just flash them through the models and this one in particular it was really the lighting was really dim yeah which it makes does look sense. pretty cool though yeah it's yeah. that guy kind of reminds me of like a, a bone dragon ogre mm -hmm. yeah the, the centaur and the uh the other fellows yeah yeah i really dig those models man uh as as a bone reaper player like I, I'm going to have to pick up a set just so I can paint them mm -hmm. and look at them. And I mean, pretty, pretty cool. Like the centaur model is pretty sweet, man. Yeah. So we'd only be like speculating, but just like total wishful thinking as a bone reaper player, like what kind of point value and ability would you really want these guys to bring that it's worth taking, right? You're kind of in a tight spot right now where, you know, points are, points are pretty aggressive for them because they were kind of stepping too high for a little bit. And so they, it's adjusted, but you know, you, you've got some really big power players you got to put in there. So like, what do you want these guys to do and what kind of points do you need them to be at that they might make it in? Yeah, absolutely. I think they need to hit in between Mortet Guard and Cavalos Death Rider points values, unless they do something ridiculous. Like if they have some pretty sick abilities, like Quester Soul Sworn or something like that, then I could see myself maybe swapping them out for like a unit of uh, Morgast or uh, like maybe a monster that I would take or like Necropolis Stalkers of Mortis Guard, swap those out. But yeah. without seeing their abilities, it's difficult. But you're absolutely right. You're kind of pigeonholed into a couple different lists with Bone Reapers. They don't have a huge line, but it is difficult to fit things into a list, especially if you like to take endless spells, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think list building is uh, quite a bit more challenging if you want to play outside some of the classic lists that have been coming out over the last year. So it'll be really interesting to see what the uh, what the composition of their War Scroll is. Yeah. yeah. I feel you like know, they look like they're supposed to be outriders, so they're probably in a pretty speedy role, and they're like a, a small unit, which is something that OBR could use, I feel, something faster that can do utility things outside did the they, castle. Uh, did they say how many models it is? Because uh, it shows it's like these three models, hounds so and then three little guys. Like, is it three so per unit? Five, six, seven, eight. I think it's eight models. Okay. Because one thing to consider, you know, we've been seeing this a lot kind of frequently – um, these Warcry Warbands are, are usually no joke when they come out. Oftentimes you see people like, oh, how can I, oh, they're, they can be conditional battle lines. So how quick can I get like six boxes ready to go? You know, <laughs> right, totally. if they, yeah. like, like if there's some weird uh, health mechanic, kind of like the Royal Beast Flayers, and then like your Gothister Harvester could revive that stuff on us or something, you know, that, that could make them like an awesome tar pit. They seem like they have a potential to do something like that. 
Um, yeah, being able to revive be the multi-wounded models versus the ones that are a little bit easier to lift. So you can yeah. bring in value that way. And yeah. And if yeah, those I mean, dots are so on 25 possibly. mils, you can like space your guys out an inch apart and then use your counter charge ability to slingshot them through your own unit and tag something in front of what you thought was the screen. That'd be cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All kinds of fun possibilities. Yeah. And just kind of a cool... A uh, fresh uh, unit that's going to come out for Bone Reapers because Bone Reapers are a little 2D. I hate saying that because I love them so much, but it's cool to see some spice. And I think people are going to take these just to kind of revitalize their lists a little bit and be like, look, I, I was able to fit them in and do well with them. So, mm -hmm. right. I think right. on the Sylvanath side, like they're really cool new models, and maybe it's a way they can um, work to like phase out dryads or something or um you know different kind of models like that um but i'm a little nervous for them because i don't know what they've got a lot of tricky models you know they've got they can do all the little tricks and stuff that they want it just depends on what you're what you're able to add in so i'm really curious what these guys need to do mm -hmm. that i want to take them over the teleporting tree revs or the minus one to hit and wound dryads because i'm taking like, expensive heroes normally and i need roadblocks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need these guys to be cheap enough to be roadblock because if we're talking like ghost amids, they don't fit, right? Yeah. So um, I, I, I'm I'm curious where these guys fall because it looks like a mixed bag art. You know, there's like mm -hmm. a single bowman and you know and some dryads. And yeah. Being, again, like really dope got, models, like really yeah. cool. Potentially like a similar like a mini uh, drycha attack with like bees coming out, and then you got some of the teleportiness. But all these all these things that you see here are same things that you see in other units. So it is kind of like interesting to see how they're going to fit in and if they can fit in. It's maybe once the new edition comes out too, things might change pretty dramatically for Sylvaneth. But yeah, sure. my big question with them is what are they infected with? So this like this twisty vine thing is their infection. It doesn't look nurgly. I don't think it's a nurgle infection. I think it's something. I think it's like either a chaos or like just some sort of life corruption that is happening to them. Is Warcry's uh, like scene happening at the same time and space as Sigmar? Uh, wasn't it she should doing be that whole like pretty similar because this is all the um, and wasn't that part of Dawnbringers recently? Yeah, yeah. I think I think it is. These kind of these things do tend to kind of coincide with it i don't think these guys will be in the dawnbringer six but um well maybe maybe some they have ways of throwing them in there <laughs> um right but uh it's gonna be the chaos book so it's not likely but you never know um yeah, yeah. uh so they probably it looks like they're still in gur these guys look look like they're all still in gur because they got that one big this thing here um which is has a lot of special rules in war cry but i don't know if they're going to do anything with it in sigmar but it's still a pretty pretty awesome looking tree that you could it's, well that i did not see that That's yeah awesome. this is a it's a terrain piece and it's it's a one of the the trees that they have in war cry that grab people and and suck their blood um they uh they cut one down and they use it to fend off the other trees and then they <laughs> sacrifice people by throwing them in that maw that's awesome oh we got a first time chat from Discar, and we've had a lot of chats from Chris, but we've been just enraptured by these models here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's Warcry. That's Warcry. We'll see what happens when they come out. It'll be cool. I love their brave donations to our game. Thank you, Warcry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Briar speaking and Bow. Yeah. Speaking You're of... You're almost always busted or awful. Yeah. Thank you. For and more this. brave donations that are more often awful than busted, Warcry or, or War uh, blah, blah, Underworlds. Yes, Underworlds. Yes, yeah. I uh, I'm not hyper stoked on the sculpts in this, uh, but I I don't know. Let's talk about it. I mean, when I'll you tell you the coolest part is you that they a... just told me a Flesh Eater Courts book like a month and a half ago that they took the the last warband out of silently, n said nothing, right? Just removed. <laughs> yes, I know, didn't even get to paint that warband. Damn it! Yeah, so it just silently removed, and then blam! Here's a brand new one that's not in that book. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome, thanks guys. But when you do mutate as a ghoul, you you get an amazing bush, which is on display there. Um, 
Yeah, and the, these ghoul models, I, they're not, yeah, they're not my favorite. They don't have as much of that characteristic. Like, she's a chef, but she doesn't look as chef-y as she could be. That's kind of yeah. the uh, idea behind it. The gargoyle is cool, and honestly, I'd be cool with her, too, because she's pretty unique. But the other ones are just, like, ghouls. Yeah. You know? the it looks the like one... Crypt Guard. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I mean, you know what I'm like, mm -hmm. even the even the guys from, even, like, the... The surf guys from the Beast Flayers kits are are kind of like that, you know. Like, give me something a little bit, yeah. A little bit different. But I'm hoping one of the local guys in my scene wants these because I want these guys. These, uh, <laughs> I love these guys. So these are the these are the electro flagellants, essentially the the radicals of Sigmar that worship his aspect as a as a lightning bolt. So they've all gotten yep. struck by lightning at some point, feel the calling of Sigmar, and like. I just, I I love these sculpts. I don't know. I, I thought they were um, like zombies at first because they got the kind of ramshackle look, but it's the it's the fanatic ramshackle look. Uh, right, it's like a dark. What is up with the leader? Can you explain that so miniature to me? What's what this on? is is this he is this guy here is like the elder. You can see his beard, um, and he must have been struck by lightning a lot because he's like charred black. But this is his son here who's holding him up on his shoulders. Um, and, and yeah, that's, hmm. that's what's going on there. It's, it's the dad okay, sitting so on hold his on. shoulder's son. Is that two dwarves in a trench coat with a dead body in front of them? No, it's an old dude sitting on top of a young dude who's big. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, I get it. I I could oh, not I see the beard. Make heads or tails I, I really had to, to dig in here. Hold. Yeah, we have to zoom in on this. I don't know. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can zoom in too much, but uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So like, it's hard to see where one starts. You can see his toes down here, and you can see like yeah, part of his leg there, and then just like yeah. Okay. Yep. I see. That's one hell of a model, man. Yeah. Right. Must say. I really want these guys and they're lightning too. So lightning might have some utility. Usually it means mortal wounds and that's always handy to have in cities <laughs> in, in any armies, just whatever can put out mortal right. wounds. So these guys I am might... pretty stoked because those are the two armies that I own right now. Yeah. So yeah. It'll be a nice purchase for me. And like coming from Idaneth, the Warcry stuff just hasn't been, it doesn't do much uh, in Idaneth. I think part of it too is because they're small units that don't move very fast. But going into cities, going into something that does just kind of walk, uh, these guys can be put in the right place at the right time, or like they can have more utility than than uh, some guys to sit in the back watching the sharks run away. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Cool. And one one nice thing about cities for like these type of war bands, and kind of like we were talking about at the intro, they really capitalize on like the plus one to attack characteristics and and plus one to rend and, and those kind of buffs with these like multi profiles where they might only have a single one uh, attack that's and then now you you get to make that two and mm -hmm. that can be pretty substantial when you're yeah. like buffing all of their profiles and they've got a, it's obnoxious usually to roll them but yeah. It's powerful. That's the big thing with Warcry, with both Warcry and Underworlds, is like if they have good keyword synergy, you can get some unexpected interactions, um, and yep. that's that's like we have really strong keyword keyword synergy with with both of these armies. Um, but yeah, cities especially like human human that if you're a human, you get a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club. You know that's how it is. <laughs> you, you're part of us. Yeah. And then on to the Dawnbringers 6, the next Dawnbringers book. We're going back round to chaos, boys. Uh, with, it's always going to end up here. With, what's her name, Anorexia? No. Abraxia. Abraxia, okay. <laughs> you were so close. Yeah, she does not look anorexic in any way. But, oh, wait, uh, <laughs> Oh, does it say okay spear of the ever chosen okay spear of the ever chosen she's yeah. the spear that of the ever chosen uh, wielding the, uh, another spear it's amazing dude it's an amazing model it's really gonna cool. synergize with varengard which is going to be so freaking fun mm -hmm. uh is it going to be good no probably not good as an army of renown but that model bro that's probably one of my most favorite miniature reveals in i don't know how long like mm -hmm. 
Thanos was awesome, but not my cup of tea. As far like aesthetically, really cool looking model, not my cup of tea. This is, and I just absolutely love it, bro. Just absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah, that's... I agree. It's pretty ten out of ten. Yeah, I doubt I'll buy it, and I doubt I'll play Slaves to Darkness again. But it's a really cool looking model. Yep. I Look know at that side are... profile, man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Just a really cool monster. Yeah. It's got a similar yeah. vibe to Ionis's uh, dragon. It's called like a, it's like a Tora, Chaos Tora something. So it's, it seems like a almost a Chaos Toraline, um, sort of thing. Um, mm. yeah, I forgot what it's called, but yeah, it's it was Tora something. Uh, and I know the emotion I'm gonna feel as I look across the battlefield and think that's a really cool model, but it just killed like three of my hammers or whatever it was like i like to look at it and say that's so cool i can't wait to make you pick that up off the table yeah <laughs> i know right it's a yeah. different awesome. i mean i yeah i kind of want to think a little bit about like what kind of buffs you can give to varengard because they they kind of get it all already mm -hmm. i mean knights of the empty throne you can run and charge they've got a four up mortal wound ignore you can make them a, a general in your army and just have like a really tanky general running around uh run and charge is accessible plus one to hit and wound is accessible so like what kind of spice is this model going to bring to Varengard and how is it going to synergize as an army of renown? It's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. It's probably going to say something dumb like your Varengard can use its whatever fight for a second time is. Even once per game, you can have a Varengard do that even if they've already done it or yeah. something. You know, sure. like let him have the fight yeah. twice for a second combat, second time per game, some like one time. So you could pick, you can, you know, use it strategically. You've got a once per game to let you reuse your once per game. Yeah. Yeah. Chain activate would be fun. Uh, fall back and charge would be really fun. Yeah. I'm pretty I mean, sure they said it like three or four times, but her spear is going to make spawns. So there's that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be it's got to be spicy because you're gonna have that model and twelve Varengard, maybe, and that's will probably be your whole list. I don't know, depending on how many points they make this thing. Yeah, a little odd because I always thought that the Varengard themselves were basically of that position because of their rank. You know, with their with the whole story with Varengard, they're like one in a million, right, or one or a hundred thousand. Yeah, you know. So she's a, she's a more varying like, Varengard, like a one in a thousand, like one in ten million or something, yeah. you know, I guess. And I've, I don't know a lot of of uh, lore for Slaves to Darkness, but I've never heard that name before, yeah. as somebody yeah. related or closely spoken with Archeon for sure. Right. Um, yeah. Absolutely I, agree I, in the chat, chain activation. Yeah. That's probably, like, I could see that being a thing with this I had model. always hoped that Eternus was going to be, like, the Varengard uh, um, turning guy, right? And then ride with Varengard that he had converted to. That was always my hope for him. So mm -hmm. I think this will be cool because I like the Varengard. They are slappy and people really like that play style. So maybe this will, like, take the place of Bellicor or Archeon or something. You know, the, it, it's weird because mm -hmm. she's not going to... They, they're best in Knights of the Empty Throne, or you just splash them into whatever, right? But they're really awesome yep. in Knights of the Empty Throne, and they'll be the general, but, but she can't take any artifacts or anything, so maybe this will be a, a, a new way that you're enticed to play the Varen Guard. Who's yeah. all there? You can get her and three Varen Guard for the cheap price of $140. <laughs> Which is deal. extremely cheap when you think yeah. about Varen Guard being $110 yeah. a box. That yeah. always that always befuddles me. <laughs> Every like, day. bring it, dude. Like, I we only have six Varengard in studio, so I'm ready for this box for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Hundred percent. Really cool. We got a picture of the. Uh, there's the Dawnbringers book. We're gonna buy that, and then the new edition is gonna drop two months later. So that's fun. Yeah. Just spend uh, sixty bucks on that. Love the art on the front of the box, of course. But the uh, any armies of renown that will be in there are going to stick around because they're going to re-port them over into allegedly, edition. yeah, allegedly. <laughs> um, allegedly. Yeah, I, I think the plot is also kind of interesting for me. Um, she's going into Gairan. It sounds like it sounds like she's going after Vertigris, and the idea is that Archeon is striking back after Sigmar has struck out 
um, and he's trying to corrupt the realms. You got this new this new cha- Nexus Chaotica, um, and then they also have in this upcoming uh, upcoming book, uh, Carthusa said that one of the two cities that is founded will fall. So either she is going to take Vertigris in this um, in this book, or uh, you're going to see in fourth edition uh, spoilers the Skaven are going to pop up and take out Embergard. That's my little uh, little lore prediction in the back. Tinfoil hat for a second. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So is Mason, what do you think feature? of that? Uh, what do you think of that terrain feature, bro? Is it for Slaves to Darkness? Mm, looks like it. Like, is it's gonna have rules, like kind of like the maw pot? They're they're adding in a terrain piece for them, or the maw pit, I guess. It's yeah. it's really cool. I mean, I it's got a great paint job. I I'm not I'm trying to see how it's like. Yeah, I mean, it's a terrain piece that's announced separate from like Warcry or anything else. So it seems like they wouldn't release it without there being some sort of rules around it. Yeah, honestly, um, I think it's wicked cool. I mean, it looks. It's like it's going to be kind of fragile a little bit, but yeah, it looks really, really dope. Uh, and it's a good sign because, you know, I think there's a lot of like talk or speculation that we might lose terrain features in a new edition with a change, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, this mm-hmm. doesn't mean that we won't still, I guess that's not proof of that, but if they're releasing one right now to, to use it, and they said that they're going to kind of pseudo keep these armies of renown and maybe it's tied to that, then um, that could be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is a point for more terrain, and the 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 Moppet too is another one. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Is this supposed to be like one of the circles, like one of the Varengard? They call them circles, right? Something. So it's a uh, what they I think what they're doing is they're planting it in ley lines, and they're like pumping chaos something, chaos energy into that to to uh, demons. Or harness. Uh, so if- can I? I guess I can either harness the power or sto or like corrupt the uh the realms Mm, okay yeah and it mentions the dark oath stuff too so Mm -hmm. yeah what if this is like a recursion engine for dark oath because they're going to be so fragile and they're you know they have mortal wound output like bone splitters is kind of how some of the kits work right now dark oath kits so you know maybe that's going to be like a uh, recursion hub or maybe it'll give them a buff or something like that that could be interesting if they work it into dark oath to kind of try to push some of those boxes because that box even though it's not in this reveal is pretty pretty freaking cool dude like i love what they're doing with slaves of darkness right now just really blossoming their whole line and giving people multiple different ways to play is i think it's the way because it's like the dark side of uh, uh, of stormcast eternal is in my mind mm-hmm. yep yeah, you got the dark side of cities and the dark side of Stormcast Eternals all wrapped up in that one faction. Then, in chat, uh, yeah. Man, he asked a fun question about faction terrain. He said he's annoyed that they cost zero points because it means their army's just worse without it. There's really no drawback apart from real world monies. Yeah, I, I can see that. Honestly, like along the same lines with that gripe, the problem is that they've been historically for a while now unaccessible you know a new army comes out and you can't get its terrain piece or usually it's endless spells mm-hmm. as well right and i know there's been production issues and there's a lot of like theories and speculation on why that is and i'm sure there's there's validity to that but i do agree yeah if your army has one it's a weird way that they've baked in an allegiance ability for you that you need to have represented on the table and is threatened of, of getting taken away in the, in the form of a stomp. So I agree that there's no drawback necessarily to taking it, but I think the intent there is that they've baked in another uh, allegiance ability for you that, that is fragile in a way because it can be taken from you if your opponent plays to that advantage whereas mm-hmm. you know the orders are on cities are always going to happen there's no really mitigating that but but a bonus you get from your shrine or from your um, seraphon tower or something i can take that away from you so that's kind of my right thing. yeah absolutely beautiful piece so uh why don't we move to the big 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 news the big, which is big big news the new edition the of new course. edition Pull up with a cool new trailer where you get Stormcast with different eyes. All right. So we're exiting the Age of the Beast and entering the Hour of Ruin. Uh, We got Skaven popping up 
as we saw in the trailer, um, the entirety of Blight City is popping up in Akshi. I think if you look closely at the trailer, I noticed that the uh, the flags that they have are the Twin Tail Comet, which me makes me think this is actually Imbergard from the Twin Tail Crusade. That's right next to the the new newly realized Blight City. Um, and in response, uh, Sigmar is opening the Ruination Chamber, which is the Stormcasts that are on their last leg of humanity with um, higher collars and cool new abilities. To me, it... Yeah. Yeah. Um, we need another chamber. Yes. For, uh, for Stormcast Storm Eternals. I feel like they, they want... Definitely it. not enough chambers. Yeah. I, I feel a little underwhelmed by the Ruination Chamber so far. We'll see what else comes out. But, like, it just feels like regular Stormcast with bigger collars versus, like, something completely mutated, completely crazy. It's like they want to have their cake and eat it, too. They want... It's like it's bad consequences for what they're going through. They just like have powers and they're more disconnected, but they're not super disconnected. We don't it's just like more stormcasty than the other stormcast, which doesn't really distinguish nothing really changed in terms of how we understand the stormcast um all that much. Well but, the whole Sigmar lied thing, presumably, from what we know, spoilers, is that their souls are slowly draining away as, as they continue to reforge and they get to this ruination point. So, but like the earliest information that I know about Age of Sigmar was that Stormcast lose a bit of their souls every time they die, right? Yeah. Like I thought ooh, that that was on the, the forefront. So yeah. um, that's, did he, did he lie about this ruination chamber? Did he lie and say, oh, it doesn't actually really affect you that much? Like, yeah, it happens, but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You know? And then or turns he... out it is kind of a big deal. But yeah. only three times, apparently, from the trailer. You get three deaths, th three launches, and then your ruination, baby. You know? Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, uh, beautiful art, though. I, I dig it. I like the different colors that they use. I like how their weapons look just a little bit more powerful and a little bit more brutal. Uh mm -hmm. They're just they're they're just turning into absolute houses. Like every model that you see here just looks a little bit more brutal, which mm -hmm. is good because they're probably going to scale them up too. And this must be the ruination chamber symbol. Yeah, they'll be bigger and bulkier. I was thinking they might go the opposite direction to make them like even slimmer, you know. But they're going going back to chunky. Five wounds on a two up save, four up ward. Yeah. Just. They'll, they'll do it all, man. They're going to get the first battle tome, and it's going to be so good for a couple months. And they fight yeah. on death instead of explode yes. because they don't get reforged <laughs> anymore. So they yep. just go down swinging. And bigger that's, news. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Bigger news, you get the rats finally get their due. All the Skaven fans can come out of the corners can uh, where they've been hiding every tournament. Um yeah, it's got to be like so it. exciting and so feel bad, right? Because you've got these dedicated Skaven players that have weight in models that are now going to get brand new ones, which is awesome. But like, you know, it's they, they've held on so tightly for so long. But uh, the they new, all have a gun. Great. Yeah, exactly. it's like two shots, fives and fives. It's like a whole army of pink whores and you got to roll all those dice. Yeah. yeah. Or like or like, like throwing axes with fire better. players. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. The hero will have minus one rent, so you'll have to roll for all the heroes separately. Yeah, yeah. And we saw in uh, in the trailer, we saw we at least we're gonna get new Jazales, new clan rats, new ogres, and the the rattling gun, um, mm -hmm. and then the rat riding a rat, which is is gonna be very popular with people who like. Rats. They have like an art piece of that too. Um, I don't know where it's <laughs> yeah, posted, yeah. but it's really sweet looking. Yeah, it popped up somewhere. It's not in here. Um, yeah, and by going into the the rules, like with the kind of things that we heard, we didn't. So, color me a little skeptical. There's a little. I, I have a I have a Debbie Downer inside of inside of me, so I apologize. But I heard a lot of things that sounded a lot like the 10th edition release of 40k. Uh, I didn't hear simpler, you heard but correct. simple. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> streamlining accessibility and modularity but not at the expense of depth so um it's a lot of corporate speak for um i don't know <laughs> like, chop this up 
Yeah, the, so they, they keep talking about how they're emphasizing they're going to keep the flavor, so it's not going to be everybody becomes the same thing, but it's supposed to be modular, which I think means that they're going to have more universal special rules. I imagine it's more places to slot in additional rules, like special heroic actions, special monstrous actions. They'll have other little things where you could just slot in a new ability in that phase. Um, and uh, they, they also talked about more reactivity, so potentially more in different kinds of command points and abilities that you can do in your opponent's turn, which I think is great. Um, they're keeping the Are double they talking turn. About... Yes, yes. Yeah. Were, were, uh, were they talking about a uh, generic command for Counter-Strike? I didn't hear that, but I did hear more reactivity. Did you hear anything, Mason? I don't remember a specific counter strike kind of mention, but definitely more counter play, you know, yeah. like, like you were alluding to, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I am in favor of. Um, but also with the caveat of it needs to be like new ways that I can interact, but not a bunch more possibilities. Because I think one problem we see with like battle tactics, as an example, I'm a, a lover of battle tactics. However, it would be ignorant to say that it doesn't drastically halt the game every time we need to pick it, right? Yeah. It, now, if you and I are in the thick of it, we play lots of games. It's my turn one. I've castled up. I'm going to be like, I'm doing this. I'm boom. I'm casting the spell. Auto cast. Here we go, right? That's different. Most of mm -hmm. the time, you halt the game to make this choice because it's really important. So, um, you know, right now we do we do have quite a bit of of interplay, and armies are getting their own unique counterplay. So, um, as long as it's not like an overwhelming amount of decisions, I think it's really awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I think the keyword thing is going to be. Uh, super helpful because yeah. right now like, I, I've seen a, a lot of you know people worried about that or, or uh, like, skeptical but in a lot of ways it's just going to say you know um, six is to, to hit our, our mortal wounds right they're just going to call that like poison shots or something yeah. right and so they can just mm -hmm. put on this on the war scroll you know the the block out the sun shot from the sentinels gives them poisoned bullets right like yeah. so it's it's just going to be clean so you know a, a, an exact reference point that's the same language so just be it's because they mess up right yeah. so if they just write it once right. and they copy paste it then there's less error so yeah. like yeah. to me that it that there's not a lot of change other than a um a streamline or like a homogenization of the language yeah, that so that it good. becomes easier for them to be consistent. I think mm -hmm. that's like a big, a big piece for people that people should hopefully try to understand. And we could be proven wrong. It could be atrocious, right? Like watertight. Yeah. So there is, but, there is like the potential if you have more universal rules, how they interact with uh, different buffs within an army can be accidentally, yeah. you can trip into unpredictable things that kind of can yeah. happen. And the fear could be that, like, um, for Deep Strike, right? They could call, have one called Deep Strike. You have to be outside of nine blocks. And mm -hmm. then all of your guys are going to have their flavor, right? Because what they've said is we're going to keep the flavor. So I think there's also a little bit of a fear. Is like, is the flavor just going to be the name? And then you're going to say you have Deep Strike? Because that's not really flavor, right? Yeah. That's just keeping a... a, a lore name or something right that like yeah. we don't really look at that we we just say deep strike so maybe in that case it's not necessary but like th those are kind of the thoughts that i'm thinking about with that some potential pitfalls is hopefully they say you know you, this character gains deep strike and in addition the first time you use the stormcast call from heaven you could be at seven inches instead of nine right so they can keep mm. that and still incorporate deep strike yeah. as the core mechanic so um the, yeah. uh, a, lo a lot of potential there i'm really excited i didn't really hear anything that like super terrified me you know i was yeah. kind of actually all rather mm -hmm. expected especially if you're kind of tapped into the community right there's a lot of mm -hmm. um or people out there that have been playing the game for a way longer than me and they recognize these patterns that, that mm -hmm. usually happen so yeah yeah i'm pretty stoked i think it looks fun yeah yep I'll, I'll be interested for uh for indexing and uh how we can cover that and visit different factions and what mm -hmm. that means for the game some of these yep. changes that are streamlining and matching up with 40k a little bit more a lot of us that are like i'm i'm aos all the way i'm not much of a 40k player at all i like I love the look of 40K and I've played it in the past in previous editions, but I'm really excited to see how this scales and what kind of different ways we get to play with all the armies that we have is gonna be because 
you know, it's pretty fun being in a position we are as content creators where we can show everybody all of this different stuff and they can shop around a little bit before they decide to really dive deep into a new edition. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to start doing this on Twitch so we can show yeah. some of these uh, different things off. And I'm excited to get different guests, different people that main different armies. And it just opens yeah. up a lot of possibilities for us to connect as a community. And I think that's going to be the most exciting part. Yeah, and just always gonna... remember rules change all the time. And there's new GHBs and all that stuff. We always pivot and we always find a way to make a lot of fun out of the game. So rules changes are going to be, or it's going to be a shock, but I think we're going to have a great time with it. And I am just absolutely stoked for it. Yeah. For me, I, I really like the Ideneth book and I really like the Cities book. I think, well, especially the Ideneth book is just so well well put together and well balanced and the Cities is, has got so much stuff in it. So I'm, I'm like sad to see those go, but it is going to be a big blitz of content. It's going to be a very wide open meta. So it's going to be crazy. You're going to see crazy combinations that actually will actually work because yeah. everybody else is trying to figure things out at once. Um So it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, you know, you saw it happened over in 40K side. I'm a little nervous because they have to do like, what if they want to test out all these factions against each other? That's like 576 games. Um, but it, we don't have the range projection that you have in 40 K. Um, so, and, and some of the, like, like the Eldar mechanic is something specific to that army that like you don't really have as much of that in age of Sigmar. You're probably going to see maybe some of those regi regiment regiment downs become unfair. Um, maybe some of the magic doms and shooting people that the typical bad guys, get boosted up too much um but we'll have we'll have the uh the new battle scroll update come out um hopefully they'll address them pretty quick and it is a different rules team than the 40k uh side yeah. so and i do believe i heard them say that they basically figuratively or literally pulled out every model and reevaluated what that represents in the art right? Yeah. They talked about these stats. And so this reimagination of who should maybe go four inches, who actually goes 10, like, should yeah. this fly? Like, you know, like uh, that mm -hmm. I I'm excited for that potential because I don't think they can make it worse. Not that it's bad, but there's really not a ton <laughs> right. of consistency. So if you just m modify it, the outline I'm happy, but I'm sure that they're able to accomplish more. So yeah. um, big success. I see yeah. somebody in the chat was talking about the new three inch reach thing. Yep. So um, you heard it here first. Games Workshop says three inches in, is enough. You don't need any more than that. Yeah, for um, fighting specifically, by the way. Yeah, it's yes. for fighting. Yeah. Um, for melee. Yeah, for, for melee. melee. Yes. But, you know, I, I, so this point is about uh, it gives 25 millimeter models are able to fight in four ranks, which seems like mm. it could get pretty out of hand. Um, yep. I think that's a fair uh, assessment, but and I could be wrong, but my inference of what they said actually was if you are within three inches, you will be able to fight. So the idea is that models that are in engagement range are going to be able to fight. So sometimes that might be four ranks, but depending on, you know, the way that it works, I don't think it was necessarily like three inch reach, but I guess it's kind of the same thing. But to me, that's kind of cool, right? If you're in combat, everyone that's in the combat th that we've established should be able to poke because we're not literally standing there. We've got to have a little bit of imagination of the fight scene, right? So yeah. I am forming around you my rats are buddies that fight together right well maybe not rats is a bad example but these guys they fight together they're gonna like i'm gonna get my poke in you know mm -hmm. so i think that thematically for what we're trying to portray on the table and call combat and engagement range i think i think that that's kind of fair yeah yeah uh, i think you're gonna see I, for me in terms of the implications you're gonna see uh you know, more large units will have an advantage with that. And especially since Blizzard's also going to be going away at the same time. Um, you also, how, how you screen and how you fight over screens is going to change as well. Uh, so yeah, I got to be careful about that as well. Yep. Uh, David, do you have any thoughts on uh, what three inches means? Uh, I think that you hit the nail on the head. I think that a lot of competitive play right now revolves around pinning your opponent and with very smart pile-ins, funneling your opponent to specific areas on the board and stopping them from advancing on some of your key pieces. But basically just saying this zone is covered by this very cheap and easy to use unit that's going to stop movement from some of the hammers in the opponent's army. So with the fight... With the three inch fight, that's gonna mean death for a lot of your little screens that are like, haha, I'm 80 points and I'm stopping this this you know, this unit that has 
that doesn't have two inch reach but has a high damage uh, potential, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just stop them by moving, you know, 15 sixteenths of an inch away or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to make a huge difference. Um, but it just depends on how they really clarify how the three inch engagement range works. And mm -hmm. I think Mason had a good point. Uh, if you have a if you have a sixty man unit that's double reinforced, you know you can fight in that many ranks, but uh, terrain might be more impactful. And smart players are not going to allow you to get all of those models into combat. They're going to yeah. be in between terrain. They're going to have another unit that's going to counter hit you if you pile in too close. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to shake things up, not going to lie. But we're going to learn how to play, and it's going to be fresh. Like yeah. It's going to be like unwrapping a brand new video game. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm very excited about it. And not to sound like a broken record, but again, what it does is it future-proofs mistakes because you can just copy paste oh you're in combat you're fighting we don't have to oh damn should we have made that sword two inch reach because that's weird to change yeah. right so like it, again it, i think that a lot of what I, a trend that i really noticed was that they were doing stuff so that they could literally copy paste because they think they have a good you know and that that's the tough part right if it's a good rhythm if it's a good structure and foundation then the copy paste is going to work great because it's going to be clean we'll know exactly where to go but if mm -hmm. that foundation is weak or there is nuance that's what's going to need to get adjusted because it's going to spread quickly yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. uh but I, I am optimistic i'm super excited so. yeah uh, another little thing i noticed uh i i thought i heard uh they're talking about using three inch reach for a lot of other stuff too so i think we're going to see a lot more abilities and buffs be you know pick a unit within three inches instead of um you know pick a unit within 12 or something like that. So it's kind of similar to how the orders work in cities. I think you're going to see that uh, spread out. You're going to see more of that kind of play with heroes next to the units that they're buffing. Um, I think also they said the three inch, uh, they wanted that for interacting with objectives too. So there might, you might see a change in the objective size. I don't know. Um, yeah. And maybe they do something where they talk about combat. And it's like, yeah, you can fight with everyone in three inches, but you have to have somebody like within half an inch to be making fights. That would be so a big difference. Yeah. In and then poke three inches away. Cause I think that would be some concerns if I'm just kind of thinking objectively. So if you must be closer, but you get more attacks in, then it, 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 it uh, allows you to commit harder and get more attacks, but not be like cheeky with it. Yeah. So that's something that could, we could see as well. Mm -hmm. You can also mm -hmm. screen like what, two point two and a half inches and then have like a monster behind that that can't be reached from the other unit. There's a lot of little things. Yeah. Little implications there. Um, there are, yeah, oh, the, the, the bird structure said it would be huge if they changed three inch radius instead of six. And I believe that they confirmed that that's happened. Yeah. They said, they said interacting with objectives also three inches. So uh, yeah, probably, but we're not a hundred percent sure. Um, but we're like 85, uh, and bird structure as well. They didn't, I didn't hear anything talking about terrain rules. Uh, imagine they're going to be touched because they said they're looking at everything. And that's one of the things that I hope they change. Um, that's where we've seen a little bit of a lacking in third edition. Um, but yeah, uh, I think, was there anything else we wanted to cover on the rules side? I know they're keeping the armies of renowns or regiments of renowns. And again, that could be where you see some of the imbalance come in at the, at the immediate mm -hmm. sta stage. And they're also color coding effects, which for me as somebody who's like a synthetic learner, like puts everything together in my head, uh, color coding will help a lot. Like visually, just visualizing the phases and different as long as they use the right color for each phase if they mm -hmm. have like the hero phase is i don't know purple that won't work uh, <laughs> but as long as you use the right color for each phase I'll, I'll keep it it'll go in my head and filter in properly i think it's cool but it's kind of like a nothing burger if i'm being completely honest because i rarely like you know i'm but i i know that i'm uh, kind of an outlier perhaps I, I i evaluate the game pretty competitively and i'm pretty tapped yeah. in and i've got a pretty good comprehensive understanding of most of the rules of course there's nuance stuff that yeah. always gets me but i'm rarely actually looking at the rules so color coded you know like i'm yeah. happy that that's going to help a lot of people i'm sure and i'm for it but it's not going to change my as head, somebody so. with adhd I'm, I'm happy for it just to have yeah. that association in my head will help me keep the memory keep the memory yeah. of what, what happens when um yeah and then the last little bit here for uh, the next edition they are introducing um spearhead which is Age of Sigmar, but just the tip. You just grab, you're just going to take one box and go up against another box. I know that uh, Combat Patrol is very popular in 40K. 
So uh, this will probably be a pretty popular way to go. It'll be they're specifically balancing these uh, combat patrol or these uh, spearhead boxes around uh, yep. this this game. So uh, it should be a pretty balanced fun. It's supposed to be thirty to forty five minutes uh, for a game. So I don't know. You guys, you guys think you're gonna try it out? Maybe we can see it on the channel. Um, we'll see. Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, depending on how different the rules are, this might be a good way for somebody to get into the hobby, but also to kind of play test some of the different units without going deep. Right now, there's a lot of very effective units in multiple armies that uh, play really well double reinforced, uh, spam, if you will. Uh, and this is a good way to kind of look into a faction. And anything that's going to pull more people in the community is what we're all about. Uh, the whole reason that we started our YouTube channel to, and to fill battle reports was so we could share the game with everybody and grow it as much as we can because it's a phenomenal game and it's quite honestly there's nothing like it and I think that it is underrepresented just as a whole as a kind of uh, as kind of a tabletop game. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what it is or how it functions and our goal is to share that. So Spearhead is a great way to go. I'm excited for it. Yeah, and uh, some of the people in the chat asking like how it's going to work. I believe that Combat Patrol it is a simpler, it's a simplified rule set. That's I think they even uh, tweak the unit abilities to be more balanced within that rule set. Um, and it should be. I mean, I don't think I don't know if it's going to be super competitive, but it should be essentially more balanced than just playing a seven hundred and fifty point game. Which when typically in in Sigmar, if you're playing at you know five hundred seventy hundred fifty points. Uh, you can get wildly imbalanced results because one like monster would be just so hard to deal with um, versus a 2,000-point yeah. game where the game is kind of realized. So this is another way to do that where you don't have that sort of imbalance um, as much. This is very true. When I first started playing Age of Sigmar, I was playing the uh, Stormcast half of Soul Wars against a guy that ran Beast Claw Raiders. And... Uh, I couldn't figure it out. He's like, I have two Thunder Tusks. 12 yeah. mortal wounds, 12 mortal wounds, 12 mortal wounds. Your army's dead. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, Thanks this is the, the same amount though. of points. <laughs> yeah. You have to like go purchase models so you can beat somebody at the 1,000 point, 750 point level, which feels wrong. Mm -hmm. So I like that they're trying to balance these smaller boxes. And it just shows off the kind of the breadth of the AOS, uh, the AOS Grand Alliances. And it just shows just how much there is, uh, but in little compact pieces. Because, you know, new players, I think they have a hard time wrapping their head around this whole game, right? Yeah. Especially early on. So. Yeah. yeah. I think they are cute little snapshots of what the armies represent. Like, you know, they're kind of their, their core identity. Uh, you could you might mm -hmm. even be able to, like, infer looking at those, like, what you could kind of expect from their index, right? Like, like to them, this is, like, a, a good representation, like you were saying, of what this army does. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I do think that it's a cool thing. Uh, it, it's a little odd to me. We have a couple of games in Warcry and Underworlds that are obviously different, but they're small-scale Age of Sigmar using model type games so a little odd because we have those gateways but this is a more direct gateway so i'm pro it especially if it's if it's uh modified from the 40k approach a little bit and we're using the same keyword and the same universal rules so there's actually benefit for me starting you on this and then upgrading you to the whole to the to the big leagues you yeah. know what i mean but when right, we have right when, when we have a foundation of, of rules that, that we're going into this new edition brand new wholesale if this other version spearhead is different i i have to tune it out you know because i play yeah. 2000 point constructed right i play tournament play and you yeah. know i do event play and and while this will be fun there's just there's really no way i'm going to be able to dive in or digest because yeah. i'm going to be diluting what i'm trying to learn in a, in a flux right. of information so i hope that they're going to uh share a lot of things i'm fine with some different right yeah. like make it so you can't shoot over 12 inches or something in the game to, to modify shooting slightly and what that's fine you know what i mean like make some small wholesale changes but like i need the arm and the core rules and structure to really match what we're going into this new edition or i fear for it i yeah. still think the primary buyers of this are going to be people playing the normal game Kind of like yeah. we see now, these new boxes come out, and people aren't buying it to do like a small little Dawnbringer campaign, right? They're 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 padding the army with a sixty percent off kit if you just want those ones specifically, 
Mm-hmm. They're still great. They're they're great buys, right? And they're really great pushes for Games Workshop. That's what they're always always the new new player introduction, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think if they're going to share some some good similarities, and I'm super spearhead. Yeah, it's a good way to do both. Um, I, yeah, I think that that kind of concludes it with the Adepticon reveals. My last little point, though, my last little point is that no matter what happens with this coming edition you can't blame the marketing team for hyping it up too much because the motto is hope cast into ruin so if it turns out to be a bad edition they told us from the start um sure, sure. brilliant yeah so with that we're going to go into the second part of this stream which is to go over mason and your your performance in uh in sparkle party deathmatch 10 <laughs> 